Hi everyone, Sarah Crowley here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. We are five to six weeks out from the Hawaiian Ironman. I am completely wrecked. And so it gave me the idea of sharing with you some of the training recovery techniques and prehab techniques that I use to help me keep going every day, basically. So one thing that's really important to realize is that you can only raise your training to the level of your recovery. So what we do is we try and lift all the things we do when the training gets heavier and harder so that we are on the ball every day and we can keep pushing through and make the most of the training that we're actually doing. Um, if you don't lift it up to the level you could get injured or you just won't be able to train as hard as what you need to be doing um, when you're leading into a really big race. So I split recovery into prehab and rehab. Um, a lot of people don't consider prehab as important, but it really honestly is, especially for sports where you need a bit more flexibility, like swimming, um, and then other ones where you can get injured, like running. So in triathlon, prehab is as important as recovery. Um, obviously, recovery is ultimately like really important, but um, today we'll talk about both. So for prehab, I include things like stretching and rolling. I definitely include a part of my diet as part of prehab and then also activation, so um, light sessions and, and things like that. So for example, for me, um, particularly for swimming, um, things like rolling my back, uh, my neck, uh, opening up my thoracic um, and you know, activating certain muscles using isometric holds and those kind of things is like super important. Um, I also include um, nutrients and diet, so things like magnesium. Um, I use pillar magnesium here, but that helps me to, um, you know, loosen muscles and make sure that they're ready to go. Um, and then things like light stretching, um, well, light running and light kicking in the pool and those sort of things help to activate me for the day. And so we often actually have a few sessions, particularly like a treadmill turnover set for running that actually activates you for the next session. So even though it appears to be a session, it's actually sort of a prehab session because it's getting you ready and making sure that your body's working as it should um, before you actually start the main sessions for the day. So then it comes to rehab. You've obviously trained like, you know, five, six hours in the day and there's things that I'm fortunate enough to have the time to do, but if you can add them in a little bit, it'll help. Um, and so things like massage obviously that should be regular i hear of athletes that go months without a massage i have one once a week i think the minimum is a fortnight um, if you're training for an ironman um, it just helps you stay supple it finds things before they become a problem um, and you know it can help you maintain a better position on the bike so it becomes prehab as well um, you know better position on the bike and more flexibility for your swimming and yeah it can alert you to something before it becomes a real problem Uh, if you're going to do extras, which I know a lot of athletes can't help themselves, it should be on in a recovery sort of way. So um, I recommend sometimes doing little easy spins um, and then kicking as well in the pool is really good. Um, just get that systolic pressure of the water, plus you're also actively, um, you know, using your muscles in a weightless kind of environment, which is really good for, for recovery. And then the main one, which um, I know if you're working full time, it's like real difficult, but sleep. So um, I've noticed, well, I make a habit of, as I get closer to a bigger race, it's like making sure you're in bed by a reasonable um, time. And there's an old sort of tale of, you know, every hour before 12 o'clock is worth two after. So I'm an early sleeper. I try and go to bed 8.30, 9 o'clock every day. Um, and then let my body wake up without an alarm in the morning. Um, and yeah, so for me, I've worked out perhaps seven, half, eight hours sleep is what I need. I know that's difficult if you're working full time. And then also naps during the day. I try and maybe take one, one hour nap every day, um, usually in the morning before midday so that I sleep well at night. Um, and that's also often in the hyperbaric chamber where you kind of like tie a couple of things together. But um, yeah, you can see that there's almost as much time spent training as there is focusing on every little thing you can do around the training to actually optimize the performance in the training session. And I think it's one of the key differences between um, 
amateur racing and professional racing is that we have the time and effort and knowledge and everything to put into the recovery um, such that we can perform and get the most out of ourselves and constantly raise our level. Um, there's only so far you can go with pushing your training all the time um, and not giving your body what it needs to be able to back it up and continually lift the level and improve. So I guess I'm hoping that maybe some of this stuff you can use. Um, if you're not doing it, give it a try. Our main ones I recommend is obviously sleep, staying on top of your diet and making sure you're eating after training sessions at the right time. And then, yeah, you're just trying to get that massage in at least once a fortnight if you can. Uh, obviously all of this stuff also costs money, so that has to be considered. But yeah, the main ones, sleep, massage and diet. So I put a little shout out on Instagram asking if you had any questions about recovery um, that you'd like to know. Um, so I've got a couple of questions here. One is um, from Andre Girard, 37. Um, how regularly do you take naps and how do you feel they help recovery? So one thing that I've always been taught actually right from the very first moment that I started racing as a uh, short course elite professional years ago was how important naps are. Um, I used to actually, when we were doing more intense training, um, obviously short courses, far more intensity as opposed to endurance. I actually used to sleep twice a day. Um, and I found that, yeah, just getting that extra bit of sleep, I think it doesn't need to be over an hour. It can be sort of 40 minutes, but it shuts the body down. And, um, you know, it gives you that, I think, level of alertness for the next session. Um, so, you know, you lose a bit of that drowsy, drag your, dragging your tail kind of thing. And, and then you can really, you know, hit the gas and accelerate it for the next session. And so I don't quite take as many naps now, mostly because we're training most of the day as well. Um, but if I do take a nap, it's usually after swimming in the morning. And um, yeah, it's kind of just to keep that level of alertness. And I think if you're alert, you can train better. It's obviously doing things to my body as well that's helping with recovery, but I think that, um, yeah, the mental alertness is probably the main thing I physically notice after having um, one of those nap sessions. So there's another question here from Ez Carswell, hyperbaric, why do you use this for recovery and what are the benefits? So I use the hyperbaric chamber because there's actually two reasons. One for me is uh, psychologically. So for me, I'm a very active thinker. And so when I'm in the tank, I don't think about much else. I try not to take work in there and I try and actually relax. So for me, it's a way of getting away and shutting the world out, which helps with just, um, you know, I guess being a little bit more mindful and um, relaxed. And then I guess the main studied benefits physiologically of being in the chamber is, is that oxygen transference around your body. So the, you're actually, at particularly at altitude where we have less oxygen, I'm getting an opportunity to spend an hour with full 100% oxygen um, and then that is transported around the body um, into the deep, deep tissue because you're at a higher pressure in the chamber. Um, and so I guess it helps with things like tendons and ligaments that are harder to heal, um, that don't get a lot of oxygen. Um, and yeah, so I guess you come back feeling, you know, energized definitely. And I actually find that I sleep better at night uh, having, having spent time in the chamber as well. Uh, so thanks everyone for listening. Um, if you've got any questions about today's video, please put them in the comments. Also, if you wanna know anything about my preparation leading into Hawaii in the next few weeks, um, shoot them down below. We'll keep you posted with videos. I've got Santa Cruz next week, which I'm really excited as a hit out. We're gonna practice with all my uh, Kona race gear. Um, and we'll be back to you with how that goes. Um, and yeah, look forward to seeing you guys on the island, if not watching from home. And yeah, just follow, like, subscribe and everything else and I'll, I'll speak to you soon.